Ladies and gentlemen, excellencies, dear friends, thank you very much again for joining the Horasis Asia meeting today. The meeting is still going on with another couple of sessions, and um, I have to say the meeting was a big success with around 400 speakers, including several ministers from various Asia's Asian countries. But most importantly is the takeaway, the message, and even the optimism, I would say. Asia is good news, and we feel that there's also a sense of unity. Uh, Asians working together to overcome the COVID crisis, to help each other, and to find um, a new sense of unity here in Asia. I would be joined in a minute by Bino Cheka, the um, rapporteur of the summit. He is the chairman of uh, Petra Group in Malaysia. But until he's going to join, I would like to call in a few friends uh, who are just um, coming to the room. And if you wish um, to make some comments or ask a question, please take the mic, manage the mic you see down here, and we have a kind of town hall meeting. Uh, let me start on calling on um, Benjamin Butler, whom I see in the room. Uh, Benjamin, would you like to grab the mic and get into the room? Or anybody else, uh, maybe uh, Pretty Dubey, if you would like to grab the mic and just take the mic and uh, come to the room. And uh, by the meanwhile, let me just um, continue uh, to say that um, Asia now, as, uh, as a new unity, is, uh, I wouldn't say uh, another power beside uh, the US and Europe, uh, because we are not thinking in terms of power anymore. But Asia is really a part of the world. Uh, it's the engine of globalization with the big powers of China and India and Japan and, of course, ASEAN. And we see that so many new initiatives are going on, even in terms of climate change, where, um, um, you know, the, the nations uh, like Japan, the rich nations, support um, other nations who are still very much depending on coal. And uh, climate change after um, COP26 is really coming to the center. Uh, and I see that Benjamin Butler is just going to join us. Uh, I will just let him in. Um, Benjamin Butler is a futurist uh, based between London um, and uh, in Asia. Benjamin, hello. Uh, good morning or good afternoon to you. Good morning. Yes, I'm uh, in uh, in London at the moment and uh, temperatures plummeted, hence the jacket. But uh, thank you for organizing such a, a another wonderful uh, event, Frank. Thanks so much, Benjamin. What is your um, key takeaway from the summit? And uh, I know you attended also COP26 and uh, you have some fresh insights. Um, what is the role of Asia in battling climate change? Uh, well, critical. Um, I mean, it's been slightly disappointing that the, the, the richest nations on the planet have taken since 2009 to step up to the plate uh, and deliver the 100 billion uh, dollars that they've been promising to uh, subsidize the, the less wealthy nations. But um, um, more, more than the agreements at, at COP26 itself, um, I just feel a, a very large shift in consciousness um, uh, across the planet. Although uh, some of my panelists uh, on my panel today were, were, were concerned uh, in, in Asia, perhaps um, the mindset was still rather uh, consumerist um, and that um, climate change was not necessarily the number one um, uh, priority at the moment. But um, Asia is a big place and it's it's impossible, as you well know, to, to, to oversimplify. I know from direct experience in Japan that Japanese companies are taking uh, the SDGs uh, very, very seriously. Um, the, the other risk um, on, uh, identified on, on uh, my panel was the geopolitical risk. Um, and um, uh, a l lieutenant general um, uh, of the Indian Army said that uh, he thought there was a 60% chance of a meaningful conflict uh, in, in the next decade. Um, that said, most of us were still quite op optimistic about the uh, the um the trajectory forward and uh that asia has um a, a natural resilience uh to, right. to the future 
Yeah, I think, you know, you mentioned it, the natural uh, resilience and um, uh, also in terms of, um, you know, the, the upcoming conflict, of course, um, won't happen. I think Asians are very wise not to do so. I'm um, welcoming Vino Tseka, who is the, the chairman and founder of Petro Group based in uh, Malaysia, one of the fastest growing conglomerates uh, in the country. Uh, you also uh, attended uh, COP26 in, uh, in Scotland, uh, yeah. like Benjamin. What is your takeaway um, on Asia and climate change? And what is your key takeaway from the summit? I know you spoke also about economic growth before and about sustainability. I think um, the key, I mean, the key take, um, it was a disappointment at one level because I have a very simple view that this problem of climate change first will not be solved unless you deal with poverty and education, um, especially in the third world, especially uh, in, in, in the East. Secondly, they did not go far enough, not nearly far enough, not even 10% to involve the key stakeholders who are the small and medium-sized enterprises and businesses and major corporations in, in, in the developing world. If you want to solve the problem of climate change, you need to deal with the key players in that arena. And they're not governments because governments change every five years or three years or four years or 10 years. And so whatever policies they decide to do now, there'll be another set of politicians coming in and that might change again. But industry, businesses, if they commit, if you bring them in as champions and they play a role, then you actually can have sustainable change right across. And if you get them involved with the communities they're actually making money out of and make them understand that they have to play their role, uh, you lift everyone up. And and I think my, my disappointment with COP is it didn't address those issues at all. And uh, you didn't have, I mean, forget about China, right? China wasn't there. And that's, that's a big problem. But the fact that you didn't have, you know, even Malaysia's representation or Southeast Asia's representation, it was minimal. You know, it was urban discussions about cities when we should be talking about such bigger issues that could have real pragmatic solutions. That is to deal with how do we educate people? Once you educate them, then they'll understand. Because if you're poor and you're trying to tell them, listen, you need to change for climate change. We need to stop palm oil plantations. We need to stop this and it's going to impact your, your income. They're going to say, well, I don't know about climate change, but I need to worry about how I'm going to feed my family tomorrow or how I'm going to educate my children. So you have to educate them to a level where they understand, no, actually, climate change affects you. It affects fishermen. It affects agriculture. You know, it will affect your income. It will affect your ability to do business. But to do that, you need to educate them. To do that, you must give them a solution. And I've said that we need a handicap system like golf. You know, it's the it's a great equalizer, right? And countries and regions and business need to be given handicaps. You know, if you're 20, 20 handicap out of, I don't know, Philippines and UK, US is a one handicap, well, then there's, you know, 19 strokes that they can use uh, to try and equate. We cannot move away from the fact that the, the East can't just say, oh, by the way, you guys screwed up and now you're asking us not to make money out of our own resources uh, to save the planet for everybody. And I'm asking Malaysia to say, look, you've got to stop palm oil plantations across the board because you've got to save the rainforest. It's the lungs of the world. We cannot do that because we're in this together. It's too late. We, we have to be part of the solution. The East cannot walk away from it. But having said that, we've also got to address that you can't just shut down palm oil plantations. You can't just shut down industries because so many communities rely on it. There's so much, uh, so many, so many, so many B40, you know, people living just, uh, just living on a subsistence right. level. Survivor. Yeah. So you gotta you gotta deal with those issues, and I just don't think COP dealt with any of those things. Yeah, I think you mentioned um, a very important point, Vinod, and um, I thank you for that. It's pragmatism and uh, the role of the private sector. Of course, we have governments, right, and uh, elected officials, and they have to do something uh, about climate change. But uh, the private sector can start now and can do it on their own, but uh, also needs in private public partnerships. And um, if we do that, I think you know we can move very fast. Um, and, and the Asian, you know, uh, private sector is now waking up, doing more, um, also cross border. Um, and um, w would you say that um, Malaysia itself, because you're based in Malaysia, uh, has an important role in that? And Malaysian entrepreneurs are um, jumping on the bandwagon and, and doing so. I, I absolutely believe Malaysia has a major role to play, but I think it's more ASEAN. I think Malaysia has to lead ASEAN forward. I think we, we, Malaysia cannot be on its own. We're not, again, pragmatism. We're not going to solve any problems as an individual country. 
you know, it, we need regional integration in, 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 in this sort of situation. We need economic integration in some form so that we're working together to try and, and, and make things right. actually have an impact. You yeah. know, you can't stop Malaysian, say Malaysia does something about their palm oil plantations, their rainforest, but Indonesia ignores it. <laughs> That's yeah. not going to solve any problem. You know, so, ask, um, both of you, and uh, just a quick um, answer to sum up this session, and maybe starting with you, Benjamin, uh, as you're a futurist, uh, what is the very long-term view? If you think about, you know, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, is it still a chance to save this planet? And if so, what is uh, Asia's role in that? And then uh, same question to you, Vinod. I, I, I'm optimistic. Um, however, uh, in a way, to to have some of the most optimistic outcomes, um, uh, we 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 need to realize the perilousness uh, of the situation. And uh, as Vid has has shared, it, it's in incredibly complex, and we we have to resolve wealth disparities amongst many other uh, complex factors. But The, the glimmers of hope are the consciousness of the youth of the world has completely changed and you, that was palpable on the streets of Glasgow. The voice of the indigenous people gets louder and louder each COP. Um, I uh, organized a meeting between the presidency of COP and some indigenous uh, uh, elders. Uh, and the financial sector, um, certainly I, I could point out lots of contradictions Um Uh, within the financial sector, but it seems like there is a wall of money now, uh, an investment capital moving towards solutions. So I'd offer those as, as sort of g glimmers right. of, of of hope. Um, and the beautiful thing about the human race, uh, and, and Yuval Harari writes about this in Sapiens and Homo Deus, is that w when a new story emerges, we can actually change our behavior quite quickly. And um, and so um, I, I, I I'm optimistic, but uh, not for a moment do I doubt the the perilousness of the situation. Yeah, you know it's um, uh, very good to hear. You know you hope in um, humanity and uh, you know human beings um, willingness and uh, ability to change things. Uh, Vinod, you got the last word. Okay, well I am very optimistic. I am I am have always been the optimist um, and. I have a belief in, in humanity in general. We screw up quite a bit and often, but somehow when we reach the precipice, we, we tend to hold back and we suddenly find a way out. And I believe we're that. And you know what? Here's the thing. This pandemic, while it's been disastrous and has been heart-wrenching um, and economically devastating, it's shown one thing, though. It's proven one thing positive, that just one month in Malaysia alone, one month of lockdown, just one month, um, suddenly our rivers were back to life. Suddenly the sky was clear. Suddenly everything was, the, the, we could breathe the air. The, the natural life had just come back. Suddenly we had dolphins in the Straits of Malacca, which is one of the busiest uh, trading routes in the world. Um, so this idea that, oh, it's the end of the world. We, we'll never be able to pull back. We'll never be able to change is nonsense. We can. It's not too late. We can fix this. And just one month of lockdown showed what could happen which means if we can find a pragmatic, economically viable way, realistic way of, of fixing things, it can be done. We have, you know, so here's my thing. I think there are enough people of goodwill and there are enough, um, and I think the general public in the world are now awake to this issue and they will force the politicians to act accordingly. Uh, what we must do, businessmen, economic leaders, we have to now step up and play our role where money must be more than cash. Profit must be beyond cash, right? Profit must be measured, yes, in cash, but also in how much have we enhanced the community we're working in? How, how many schools have we helped develop? How many lives have we empowered? That is also profit because that enhances a community. It makes us more money because how do I make money? I make money by selling someone a product. I want their money. But here's the thing. I need them to have it before I can take it from them. Right. We all have, we, we, you know, we have a role to play. And I think we will play that role. I think businesses are waking up to it. And those that aren't are realizing if they want to make more money, they need to play the same game, <laughs> which is fine. <laughs> which is fine for whatever reason they decide to do it as long as they do it. And I think we will all get there. Very strong um, summary, Vinod and Benjamin, and uh, you said it uh, basically, 
um, the power of um, entrepreneurship and innovation um, centered around purpose. It's not just, you know, uh, making money and, and growth, economic growth. Uh, it's really purpose. And um, if we all follow, you know, this purpose-driven way, I think we will find uh, a way out, especially in Asia. So thanks so much again to everybody. We are now uh, moving to the last uh, round of sessions. And hopefully next year, um, talking about COVID, uh, we are able to host this Horasis Asia meeting um, as in-person meeting and no longer as a virtual meeting in Japan, in Kita Kyushu, our host city for next year's meeting. So thanks so much again, and please join the next sessions. Thank you. Thank you so much, Frank. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.